Hi, welcome to Wednesday, and uh, today we're looking at Psalm 4. If uh, you'd like to pause for a moment and read that psalm, that would be a great thing. This psalm speaks of a situation, the same situation as Psalm 3, that is Absalom's rebellion. David turns this distressing experience into a song to the glory of God. And his example shows us how we should respond to difficult times and crises. It is a matter uh, not of a response, but working through it. So David starts in a difficult place. He's calling out to God and he says, answer me, answer me. David's been praying for God's help and he's desperate to receive that help. David knew he didn't deserve any help from the Lord, but he prayed on the basis of God's mercy and God's favour. And God in his grace gives us what we don't deserve. But God in his mercy doesn't give us what we do deserve. In verse 2 and 3, David addresses those who've turned against him and made Absalom king. David understood that Absalom had deceived them and the enthusiastic mob was following vanity and they pay very dearly for their foolishness. When you follow vain things and believe lies, you, you can only go astray. The people weren't just deposing a king, they were fighting against the Lord who'd placed David on the throne in the first place. And Absalom certainly wasn't a man of God, nor was he God's chosen one to rule over Israel. But uh, David also had the capacity to encourage his friends, which we see in verses 4 and 5. In these verses, David speaks to his own followers, some of whom were overcome by their emotions, but David gave them instructions, all of which are useful for us today when we find ourselves getting angry. He says in verse 4, don't sin. Sinful anger leads to sinful words and sinful actions and sometimes even to murder. Paul quoted this verse in Ephesians 4.26 where he says, be angry and do not sin which reminds us that not all anger is sinful, but we must be careful because we can be guilty of sinful anger. Uh, also in verse 4, it tells us to know ourselves. It says, search your, your own hearts. It's easy to get angry at the sins of others and ignore our own sins. Instead of being agitated because of the things uh, we are doing, take an inventory and, and see... Uh, our own sins and know our own heart and know what needs to be confessed. Also, it says uh, that we should be, ver be silent. The Amplified Bible says, be sorry for the things you say in your heart. The honest searching of the heart should lead us to confess our sins to the Lord and claim his gracious forgiveness. Uh, Verse 5 says we're to offer right sacrifices. Absalom was offering insincere and hypocritical sacrifices to impress the people, but God didn't accept them. Uh, also in verse 5 it tells us to trust the Lord. Absalom was trusting his own leadership, his own army, his own clever strategy and his popularity with the people. But he wasn't trusting in the Lord. His plans were destined to fail. David knew that the Lord gives victory to those who trust him. And in verses 6 to 8, David begins to praise the Lord. Who will show us any good means that people were, were discouraged. The more they complained, the more others joined them. And David wanted that discouragement to be replaced by God's presence and God's favour. David wanted his discouragement to be replaced by joy. And finally, David praised God for the peace uh, of the Lord, that, that, uh, that peace that God placed in his heart even before the battle had been fought and won. In verse 8, David says, I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And with all the difficulties and hardships that we face in life, this surely is, is our aim, to work through our problems and in the presence of God to lie down in sleep and peace, praising him for what he's done. Again, join me tomorrow. Bye for now.